Hello everybody, this is Tekka. I'm sick as hell, so do pardon my voice throughout this video. This is my review of the System76 Orx Pro with a 4 K display. I'm excited because this is by far the most powerful laptop I've had the pleasure to go ahead and test out on this channel. Like I said, this is the 4K model, the very first 4K display from System76 with a couple extra upgrades, which I will be talking about in just a bit. First, if you don't know about System76, their entire business is centered around these laptops and their flagship distribution based on Ubuntu called Pop OS which if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you probably know about. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the specifications, overviewing my experience with it, as I have been using it for about two weeks. But before we get too far, we need to talk about the unboxing process. It came in a large white box and opening it up, we are greeted with some pretty cool graphics and some impressively minimal and reusable packaging. It uses clear plastic with tension to keep the laptop in place and from being damaged. And after pulling the laptop out, you're gonna find a little envelope and then on the back, here will be your charger and some other accessories such as a cleaning cloth. Of course, in the envelope, you're going to get some welcome stuff as well as some stickers. The laptop itself had some soft touch material protecting both the screen and the keyboard. Now from here, we're going to need somewhere to actually place the laptop and I'm going to have to thank the uh, sponsor of today's video for that. Flexi Spot and their standing desk. This right here is the Pro Plus E7 and I have been using it for about half of a year now. It's my studio desk so I have a whole bunch of stuff mounted to it. Cameras, lights, mic, monitor, anything that you could think of is mounted and secured onto this desk. For me, I need something with very little wobble and this desk provides that for me. Over here has a really nice touch control panel to raise, lower the desk, it has preset buttons and there's a little USB on the side so you go ahead and use it to charge your devices. All the E7 desks are on par with the major competitors but at a much lower price point. When it comes to what they can actually support, the E5 desk and model down can support up to 220 pounds and this right here, the E7, can support up to 355 pounds. So even my chunky self can sit on it with confidence. Now make sure you go ahead and check the link down below because right now they're currently running their Black Friday sales event. So if you're in the market for a standing desk, now is the perfect time to save a little bit of money. So now I mentioned that this is one of the most powerful laptops. So we're going to talk about that. Let's go over the specifications. Starting with the internals, we have the i7-12700H with a speed up to 4.7 gigahertz and a total of 14 cores with 20 threads. I've upgraded the standard 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM that it comes with to 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM at 4,800 megahertz, which for what I do when it comes to gaming, video editing, things like that seems to be the sweet spot. Additionally, I did upgrade the internal storage from the standard 256 gig PCIe Gen 3 to one terabyte of PCIe Gen 4, giving our actual internal drive an impressive speed boost. All this is paired with a eight gigabyte GeForce RTX 3070 Ti, which powers this beautiful 15.6 inch OLED 4K display with a refresh rate of 60 hertz. And to me, 15.6 inches is like the perfect middle ground of like some of the smaller displays like the M1 Air at 13 inches or some of the kind of comical, almost unportable, like 17 inch displays that you get out of some laptops. They've opted to go with the 16 by nine aspect ratio versus 16 by 10 that we're seeing much more on a lot of the newer high end laptops out there. And honestly, 16 by nine is still my preference as I use these for a screen recording and media consumption primarily. Now, overall, this Samsung 4K AMOLED display is absolutely stunning incredibly color accurate, and it's super crisp, not a pixel in sight. I mean, I'll tell you, right about here is when I can, I, I'm starting to see a couple pixels here and there. I have been critical in the past of System76 for only offering uh, 1080p displays. And for me personally, this is definitely a warm welcome as I'm somebody who's used to using like the Retina displays on Apple products. So going from that to a 1080p laptop is definitely noticeable to me. And with this display, I honestly do think it looks a little bit better. 1080p is good enough generally, and there are some benefits such as uh, better battery life. But if we're looking to spend in excess of $2,000 for a laptop, the uh, good enough threshold for me is a lot higher. And I've talked about scaling and high DPI screens a lot in the past, and I'm gonna be getting a little bit more in the uh, pros and cons of this in a little bit. So now for the IO. On this side, we have an LED indicator. We have an auxiliary headphone jack, 
two USB, I believe it's 3.2 ports. Yeah, 3.2 Gen 2. On the other side here, I'm using one of them for this microphone, but we have a micro SD card slot. We have a USB type C, which I believe is 3.2 Gen 2. And of course our little gigabit ethernet right here. Now you may be wondering, it seems like it's missing ports. You're not, they're here on the back which personally I really like. I wish more laptops would incorporate the ports on the back as when you're setting it up for your actual desktop workstation, it looks a lot better. You have your power in, you have a Thunderbolt connector right here. You have your HDMI, you have your mini HDMI, and what is this? It's a little security tool, forgot what it's called. There it is, it's a Kingston lock. Now up on the top here, we do have a two megapixel webcam, which actually for what it is, does provide a, slight, a, a decent picture. This right here is a video I recorded about a week back using this webcam as my primary capture device. And I do have to say it is pretty nice. Now moving down to the keyboard here, this is a multicolor backlit Chiclet US QWERTY keyboard with a full 10 key numpad. Changing the colors on this keyboard is pretty simple. There's actually dedicated hardware buttons to do so for both changing colors as well as the brightness. Overall, the typing experience on this keyboard is very nice. It's not as clicky as something like that M1 MacBook that I use quite a bit, but there's definitely a little bit more travel on the key, so it's a, so to me it's just a more natural typing experience. I do thoroughly enjoy it. Trackpad, nothing really special to say. Works great, it's very responsive, but on the trackpad, there's actually a little fingerprint reader, which you can actually go ahead and add your fingerprints under the uh, Pop! OS settings. It's not a press, it's a swipe type motion. And so far, like almost everything else, it's working pretty well. Now the battery on this guy is a beefy boy. It is an embedded six cell polymer battery with a capacity of 80 watt hours. Watch pairing it with these specifications and the screen, it's still not gonna give you that much life. Doing very light work such as web browsing or having an office application open gave me anywhere from two to four hours using the hybrid graphics settings. But when I got into more intensive processes such as editing in Caden Live with a couple renders throughout the process, or even gaming, it gave me a battery life of just about two hours. So overall, when it comes to the specs, the hardware, the screen, everything like that, it is a wonderful system. I do have to try to find a con out of all of this, which, oh, don't you worry, I did. And it has to do with just the overall coloring and the plastic that they're using here. It loves some fingerprints and it will show them with pride. I wish there were more options as I've recently grown more fond of lighter colored laptops, or even if there was like a aluminum like material, that would be cool. I'm really starting to sound like a fanboy for that air I use. So that's the build. Now let's talk about my actual experience after using it over the last couple weeks. Due to this machine coming directly from the same exact people that actually build this Linux operating system, overall everything feels optimized and there was absolutely no issues with how the system ran and just interacting with Pop! OS on this was an absolute pleasure. And I really do like the default layout and configuration of Pop! OS and their kind of cosmic customizations as really the only things that I did when it comes to changing default settings was the wallpaper. I enabled hot corners so I could throw my mouse up in the corner, see all my open windows. And of course I made the dock a little floating dock. <laughs> Just about every other day, there was a fair amount of updates through the Pop Shop, which I did update through there, again, with no issues when it comes to something deciding not to work or needing to reboot right after an update, nothing like that. And it did give me a couple driver installation options, but I didn't really need to select any of those as the ones that just came default on the system were perfectly fine. So before I get into some more specific benchmarks and the gaming, what I'm gonna do is talk about external monitors, which seems to be the only real issue you running a, a 4k display like this and I will note here on their website you can actually get this exact same laptop with a 1080p screen if you do prefer so everything I'm about to say might not matter it looks like you're paying about a hundred dollar premium or so for a 4k display on this machine now the other kind of high-end gaming laptop I have is a 1440p display which that has the issue of not looking good at a hundred percent nor at 2x when it comes to the scaling. So for that machine, I need to use fractional scaling to get it to look good, which has issues. And it's gonna have issues no matter what Linux distribution or environment you're running in. This machine, being that it's a 4K display, it actually looks really good at a 200% 
kind of resolution scale. And because of that, I've actually had much better experience with the built-in 4K display on this thing versus trying to use fractional scaling on another display. Now the issue comes when you go ahead and plug in an external monitor that isn't 4K. If I had a 4K monitor, I'd be able to just keep that at 200% as well. Life would be good. This is a 1440p monitor. And because of that, this needs to be at 100% while this needs to be at 200%. The default XORG environment that you're in Pop! OS did not like that. They had these weird issues where it would show like a corner of the display and you can see like half of the Pop! OS background. It just did not want to work. Now something like Wayland can handle this kind of a mixed and match display scaling thing a lot better than XORG can, but Pop! OS is built on XORG and the developers actually go as to disable the easy configuration options to go ahead and switch over to Wayland, meaning it definitely has a preference. To be able to enable Wayland on this machine, there was some extra little like terminal hackery things that we needed to do in various configuration files to allow us then to be able to pick Wayland within our login manager. Switching over to Wayland did clear up those issues. And personally, I haven't experienced any issues running Wayland on Pop! OS, but there's probably definitely a reason they disabled it, and I'm probably going to run into an issue eventually. Which it is right after I recorded this that I actually did have an issue running Wayland, and that is the screen tearing for gaming was so dramatic that it made games unplayable. So for the rest of these gaming tests, I went ahead and switched it back over to Xorg. Running a Linux native game such as Splitgate here, with the 4K resolution showed us very smooth gameplay with very few dropped frames here and there. Frame rates were sitting between 70 and 80, and overall it was a very pleasant experience. From there I went ahead and loaded in some Fall Guys, and with VSync locked in at 60 frames per second, it did not drop below that at all, again giving us very smooth gameplay, and in this case I didn't notice a single dropped frame stutter or anything like that. And then after that I went ahead and loaded up a much more demanding game, Elden Ring, and it's here I'm going to note that I couldn't get Go Overlay to work simply because the current version in Pop! OS is broken and manually building it wouldn't work so I couldn't get all the really specific details on the screen and for some reason the frame rate counter for Steam was not working in this. But if I was a guessing man, the overall gameplay probably had me with similar performance to Fall Guys with it sitting right around 60 frames and you could see me running around jumping here. The only minor stutter I had was when I was running into a new area and it was loading up some assets. Overall, this machine is definitely a gaming beast. However, like any gaming laptop, it does definitely get a little loud. And now from there, we're going to go ahead and dive into some general benchmarks. I went ahead and ran Geekbench 5 both on this System76 machine with the 12th Gen i7 and the Sapphire SM16 with the 11th Gen i9. So comparing last gen and the model up. On single core performance, we saw roughly 1500 with the System76 machine and 1700 with the Asus machine. And then going over to multi-core performance is where the new generation really does shine as this is the very first time I Geekbench tested something that ended up over 10,000. At about 10,500 for the System76 machine and the last gen i9 scoring about 9600. I'll go ahead and link down below to these Geekbench results so you can see a lot more of these specifics. So with all that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you visit that link to uh, check out Flexi Spots Desks. They are great desks. I have that one right over there. And if you're interested in purchasing this computer, of course, I'll leave uh, links under the uh, resources and mentions section in the description. Overall, I give it a thumbs up on my end. They are definitely working on that kind of a Linux premium that we have to pay when it comes to pricing for this thing. It does actually make some sense, unlike some other companies. But yeah, I do hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.